Finish Ancient Era Wonders in just two turns. Know exactly which tiles to work in the early game. Kill city-states with maximum efficiency. All of these tips and more will be covered in today's video on how to optimize your early game in Civ 6 multiplayer with a better balanced game mod. We'll start with turn 1. Here, we set our city one tile to the right of our starting position. This is so that we can have a 2 food, 2 production tile in our first ring to bolster our production. Because we're using the standard CPL free-for-all settings for the Better Balance game mod, our city center has a 3 food, 1 production base. The question arises, which tile do we work first? The answer, we work a 3-1 tile for one turn and then switch to a 2-2 tile. This small optimization maximizes the amount of growth and production we'll receive in the early game. The one turn we spend working the 3-1 tile is all it takes to ensure our capital will grow in two turns instead of three. Because the cost of district scales with the number of technologies we complete, we want to rush for currency while completing the bare minimum number of techs required to get our commercial hubs as cheaply as possible. However, we get a free builder from a tribal village and we want to take advantage of this. Therefore, we grab the only technology which, with this spawn, allows us to spend all three build charges on useful tile improvements, animal husbandry. With this, we're able to build three useful pastures while adding only a single technology to our tech pathing on our way to currency. Pantheons are important in Civ, and it's generally worth running the God King policy card in order to get one if we're lacking any other source of faith generation. However, first meeting a white city-state grants us a free envoy and one faith per turn, allowing us to skip using the God King and instead use urban planning for plus one production in each city. Indeed, we normally would skip using God King entirely here. However, we're playing Aztec, and we want to use our Eagle Warrior's unique ability to capture the city-state's units and turn them into builders. When we declare war on them, it'll delete our envoy and the faith generation granted by it. So, we don't declare war on the city-state right away. We wait just long enough to bank up enough faith to found a pantheon, which is 12. This lets us swap the God King policy card for urban planning sooner and for free, upon completion of the foreign trade civic. Afterwards, we're free to farm the city-state for those juicy, juicy builders using our Eagle Warrior's unique ability. This is only the beginning of the many optimizations we make in the early game. For instance, when moving our scouts, we move them one tile at a time. This allows us to respond to new things we reveal as we move, like tribal villages. Additionally, we make use of the Settler Map Lens, which by default can be toggled by pressing 4 on your keyboard. When we see red in a spot that looks like it should be a valid settling location, it means there's a city within 3 tiles of that spot. This allows us to spot city-states and other players from further away than we would be able to otherwise. Since being the first player to meet a city-state nets you a free envoy, this trick is extremely useful. By turn 20, our cities have grown populous enough to require additional amenities to keep content. However, the only luxury resources nearby require plantations to be improved, which would require a detour from our strategy of rushing currency. We get around this by settling directly on top of a luxury resource with our third city, which instantly provides a copy of it to our empire. This way, we're able to obtain citrus even without researching irrigation to unlock plantations. We also continue to do some micromanaging of our cities. On turn 22, you can see that we do the same trick we did on turn 1. By locking a 3-1 tile in our third city, we're able to get it to grow a turn sooner, optimizing it a bit more. Fast forwarding a bit and the time has finally come to start building the pyramids. However, we don't want to get bogged down spending too long building a wonder when our capital should be pumping out settlers. So we go for the fast wonder strategy. We enter autocracy as our government as it's perfectly designed to rush this wonder. It grants 10% extra production towards wonders and since our capital has a palace and a government plaza, we're also gaining two production in the city as well. We compound this with a policy card for 15% extra production towards wonders. Now comes the chops. We utilize the ability of the Governor Magnus, who grants 50% extra yields from harvesting resources and removing features in his city. We chop one stone and one woods tiles after placing down the wonder. This is where delaying the wonder until turn 30 instead of simply rushing it starts paying off. You see, the production yielded by chops scales with the number of technologies and civics we've completed. 
Not only that, the production yielded by these chops benefits from the extra production towards wonders afforded to us by our government. If we had tried doing the same chops 10 turns ago, they would not have been nearly as effective. Thanks to all of this, we finished the pyramids two turns after we placed them down on turn 32. This grants us a free builder and one free build charge on all builders for the rest of the game. Not only that, pyramids works retroactively on all living builders. Therefore, all of the builders we've been stealing from city-states using the Eagle Warrior's unique ability also benefit from this wonder. It's an insane amount of tempo. Don't forget, however, autocracy is not the best government to stick with. Therefore, at the next possible opportunity, we switch out of autocracy and into classical republic. We make sure we do this before we finish our ancestral hall, as the government we're in when it finishes determines which legacy policy card we'll have access to for the rest of the game. Republican Legacy is a far better card than Autocratic Legacy. Eventually, we get tired of merely farming the city-state of Candy for builders. It's time to finally conquer it, and we want to do so as efficiently as possible. So, the question is, how many horsemen does it take to kill a city-state? That depends on the strength of the city, which scales based on the strongest unit the city-state has completed. If they have a horseman or a swordsman, the strength of the city center will rise to 26 and it will take three of our own horsemen to kill it. If the city state never makes a classical era unit, however, the strength of the city center will never exceed 20 and it will only take two horsemen to kill it. Just to be safe, I recommend always making three. When making horsemen, we always make sure to make use of the maneuver policy card for a 50% increase in all production contributed to them. Like all policy cards, this production multiplier applies to chops as well, allowing us to make two horsemen in a single city in just two turns. When sieging a city-state, we make sure to take advantage of the healing we get from pillaging farms and promoting. We could pillage this farm right away on turn 40, but that would waste a lot of the healing value the pillage will yield. We want as much of the 50 health as we can safely get, so we slam our horsemen into the walls this turn and pillage on the next turn when we can get more value. We use our promotions in the same way, promoting our units only when we can get nearly the full value out of the healing it provides. Thanks to all of these small optimizations, we're able to just barely kill the city-state with the horsemen we sent its way. With all of these tips and tricks at your disposal, you should have no problem mopping the floor with your peers in Civ 6 multiplayer. If you want to catch full games of Civ 6 played live, be sure to follow me on Twitch, which I've linked in the description. Remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you have anything further you want clarified. I have many other guides for Civ 6 multiplayer with a better balanced game mod on my channel, so be sure to check those out. Herson, signing out.